Hi and welcome to another Essential Lightroom video tutorial. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this effect that we have in front of us. And this is what I would call the Aqua Landscape. Now it's a great way of taking your landscapes and giving them a little bit of stylized punch and a little bit more interest. So in this video, I'm going to take you step by step through how I've created this. As always, I've created a preset for this that's going to be part of the new Hipstagram 2 preset pack that will be available really soon. So keep an eye on the channel to be notified when that comes out. Okay, so let's just jump into Lightroom and take a look at how we can recreate this effect. Now, if you like the presets that we create on this channel, please check out the links in the description below. There's a huge range of completely free presets that you can download, apply to your images, and play about to get a great looking results. We've also got a huge range of commercial presets that are incredibly well priced. So if you'd like to support the channel, please consider clicking on the links in the description below, checking those out, and picking up a couple of preset packs for yourself. Anyway, let's take a look at how we process this image. So this is the end result. So what I'm gonna do is just reset this back as you can see, it's already okay, but just add a little bit of stylization to it, makes it just a little bit more punch, a bit more dramatic. So as always, we're gonna run through step-by-step step through the panel on the right-hand side in the develop module. So I'm gonna jump into the basics panel first of all. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the tone section. Now I haven't done anything with the temperature or the tint because the image is as I want it. I want that cool aqua kind of look. I just want to accentuate that. What I am going to do though, is I'm gonna bump the contrast up on this because I wanna get some nice contrast on those edges. So we're gonna take that up to about, about plus 30, somewhere in that kind of region, just to give us some nice impact there. Maybe a little bit further. Let's push that a little bit, a bit closer to 40. Let's, let's try that. That's looking pretty good, I like that. Next up, we've got the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now I'm gonna leave the shadows and I'm gonna leave the blacks as they are because there's already nice contrast. And I don't wanna go too crazy with it. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna push these highlights. I wanna kind of blow things out a little bit. So we're gonna grab the highlights. We're gonna push those up around plus 30, somewhere in that kind of region. As you can see now, the sky is starting to blow out and lose the detail in there. And that's kind of what I want. I'm gonna do the same now with the whites, but not as harsh. So I'm gonna push those up maybe around plus 10, 15, somewhere in that kind of region. That's looking pretty good. I like that. Next up, to get some nice definition in the sort of stone detail in the mountains and so on in the background, we're going to grab the, the clarity slider and we're going to push that up to around 50, somewhere in that kind of region. And you'll see when we do that, the detail, all the contrast in these areas all starts to punch up nicely. And that's why we don't want to sort of go through too heavy with the blacks and the shadows. Okay, next up, we're going to grab the vibrance and we're going to drop that down. And we're going to do the same with the saturation. We're basically going to desaturate most of the image, but we're going to punch up the colors that I want, which are the sort of the aqua greens. So around about that kind of figure looks pretty good to me. So you can see we've nicely desaturated the overall image. So that's the first stage. Next stage is we're going to jump into the tone curve and we're going to start to make some edits to that so we can control the tonal balance of the overall image. Now, when it comes to the tone curve in Lightroom or the curves in Photoshop, you can really get very creative and you can do a lot to your image. However, in this example, we're going to keep it really subtle. We're going to crush the blacks a little bit and we're just going to give a slight pop to the mid-tone. So what I'm going to do is simply add a couple of additional points on the intersecting sections. So this is going to allow us to control our shadows, our blacks, our mid-tones, our highlights and our whites quite easily. So like I say, we're gonna give it a very slight bump to the mid-tones to open those up just a little bit. And when it come down to the shadow or the black area in the image, we're gonna crush those, but not too far. Around about there looks pretty good. So we're getting a kind of flatter black to the overall image of his outfit and the shadows and so on, but we're still retaining some of that detail. And that's all I'm gonna do with the tone curve. Obviously, on the image that you're working with, you can adjust this as you see fit to get great looking results. And finally, we're going to jump to the camera calibration settings. Now, camera calibration, you'd think, is only there to adjust problems with your camera and the colors that may capture. But you can use this panel to get really creative inside Lightroom. So we're going to use that to adjust some of the colors. So if we take a look at the uh, camera calibration panel, you can see it's broken down to four distinct sections. You've got your shadows, which you can adjust the tints between the greens and the purples. You've got the red, the green, and the blue, or the RGB color spectrum you've got in the actual work you're working with. And you've also got the saturation for each one of those RGB primary colors. And what you can do with this is you can use the hue to push it over to gently sort of nudge it in a direction. So for example, you can take your midpoint green and you can take that over, introduce more yellow into it so you can 
can make a more yellowy green or you can take it the opposite way and start to introduce a little bit of blue and get that sort of aqua kind of teal effect and this is a great way of being able to just tweak the overall colors in your image and you can use the saturation then to boost or to sort of desaturate those colors as well so what we're going to do is we're going to keep this fairly simple we're going to come down to the blue primary and we're going to just basically shift any blues that are in the color and give them a more green tinge so we're going to grab this hue and we're going to pull that over to the left hand side to around minus 50 somewhere in that kind of ballpark and you should see then any any blues in the image start to take on a slightly more green aqua kind of tint next thing we're going to come over to the green primary and we're going to grab the saturation on there we're going to boost that up so we're going to introduce more green into any of the green areas and you can see what that does is it gives it a much more aqua kind of look. So let's take a look at the before and after with just the camera calibration panel. So there's before, you can see quite muted. There's after, so we really bring in this lovely color. Now this kind of emulates some of the lakes that you see in Canada where they've got this lovely sort of aqua green kind of, co kind of color to the water. And this kind of accentuates that. But you can see it's very simple and very easy. And that's where the preset gets you to. Now you could obviously take this way further if you wanted to. You could easily come in to any of the color options. So let's just say, for example, we come down to the color section and you can see I've got all of these expanded. If we wanted to, we could go through and make even more adjustments to this. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to sort of boost this up or change this even more where we can adjust the luminance now in the aqua. So you can see we can adjust that and you can see it makes quite a difference to the actual image itself. So we could easily come in here and tweak this to get exactly what we want to adjust everything the way we want it to to get exactly the kind of effect we're looking for so like i say i'm going to leave it at this point the preset is available as part of the hipstagram 2 preset pack that's coming out soon i hope you've enjoyed the video if you did please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the future updates we bring out if you have any questions or comments on this particular video or anything else you'd like to see in future videos please pop those in the comments section below until next time take care